The 6.5 is live here at Mobile World Congress 2024 in Barcelona. We are here in the IBM booth. Dan, what has the show been so far? It's been the network core, it's been the edge, it's been devices and everything in between, making it more intelligent with AI. AI. There we go. Did we say that together? It's almost like we planned that. I was thinking about a workout, like I ran and then I did core. There we go. It and could then I be. came here and talked about AI. Yeah, but it's been amazing though, over the last 18 months, how much AI has been part of the conversation. And yes, the initial algorithms for AI were built in the 1960s. We had machine learning, deep learning, and now we're at this advent of generative AI. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the, it's, it's risen into the conscious of society. And now every technology event, but really every industry is being impacted by the power of AI. It's going to help make us more sustainable. It's going to help make us more productive. It's going to change the world. And of course, we've got a continuum of you know, governance and ethics and considerations and right. trust that we have to build, Pat. But look, here at this show, by the way, the show is back in full effect. I heard 95,000 oh. yes. people are going to be here. Um, look, it's an exciting year, and now we're going to see AI and telecommunications yes come together. Yeah, so a great uh, time to introduce our guest, Dan from IBM, Uzman with AT&T. Great to have you on the 6.5, first you. timers. Thank you, here. Yes, we hope it's not the last, yeah. but we'll see. You can grade us at the end. Well, it's anyway. interesting. First, Dan, uh, you look great. Yeah, listen, two Dans on the end. Bald and Very bearded. brotherly, I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah. Um, I think a couple years ago, or maybe it was last, no, about two years ago, Pat, you and I actually talked to AT&T, and IBM That's right. on the 6.5 in this booth, two different guests, yes. and we were talking about a 5G partnership. This year, so we kind of already hit on this rotation to AI, but yes. here we are again. Uh, Dan, I'll start this one with you, but talk a little bit about what's going on in this partnership between AT&T, IBM, and I betting it's around AI. Yeah, I mean, look, the partnership is multifaceted um, and it's it's deep. Um, I like to refer to it in kind of two two venues. Um, one is we have a three tiered partnership. Um, we see tremendous value in AT and T as a company, and we are a buyer of AT and T's products as IBM. AT&T sees value in what we do as IBM and buys from us, and then we partner together, and that's a lot of where Usman and I work together is around that partnership side. Um, we work across AT&T's business, um, and, and the value both from a product, technology, and consulting perspective of what IBM does for AT&T is extraordinarily important. Usman. Yeah, absolutely. You now, as Dan indicated, this partnership is threefold. First of all, you know, we bring our own competence together to see, you know, how our organizations can take advantage of what we do. Secondly, you know, collectively, we take our competencies and technology to our customers to see, you know, how collectively we can benefit our customers with what we are doing. For instance, you know, as an example, many of our business solutions they run on IBM infrastructure. And many of our business applications, you know, when it comes to the workload orchestration, we use Red Hat from IBM. But when it comes to IBM, they take advantage of our wireline, wireless, and edge compute and edge cloud capabilities, you know, to offer their services to their customers. So it's a it's a long standing partnership. Not only this, you know, but we have started to collaborate on many new venues like uh, generative AI, which is one of them, and uh, we look forward to it. Yeah, it sounds like a very strategic, multifaceted relationship, which by the way, uh, IBM is very strategic and so is AT&T, so it makes perfect sense. So, uh, loosely speaking, right, AI uh, can help uh, companies drive more revenue, help them on the cost side, making employees more efficient, more effective. But there's also capabilities on the network, and I'll, I'll ask you, Usman, uh, what is your vision or how do you see AI helping the network? I mean, AI and network is nothing new, but this flavor of generative AI is new. How do you see it improving the network? Yeah, that's a great question. You see, as ETNT, our mission is to serve our customers and our partners at the same time and to serve the community. And to do all this, you know, we are building a very open, 
robust, advanced, and intelligent network. at and is the only global carrier, you know, that is heavily investing into fiber and our wireless infrastructure. And on top of that, you know, we are building all the advanced network capabilities that will govern and control the next generation technologies, for instance, generative AI. Yeah. So this is at at and where we are, and all these capabilities are part of our network today. You know, for example, Ask at and We're already using okay. this capability into Perfect our network. Sense. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, and, uh, and to answer your, the second piece of your question is that what are those services, you know, that will be delivered by our network? Um, I would say, you know, like uh, in the next five years, it is expected that 70% of the data will be generated from the original 30% of the data sets. And that generative data will help us, you know, to create new foundational models, and those foundational models will be consumed to create new products and services. For example, um, safety as a service, predictive performance as a service, or you can have quality as a service, or uh, you can have a uh, product uh, discovery as a service. So all this will be delivered through at and next generation networks. Some of that we have already established and we are consistently expanding you know, on the capabilities of the network. I love it. And by the way, uh, starting off with customer service is a very hardcore, impactful uh, place where a lot of people are seeing success. And it is amazing, you know, uh, uh, chat chatbots were you know popularized about five or six years ago, but only now with this technology, well, they're, I'll just say they're most effective now. And I see some really impressive uh, 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 results. That's good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, one of the consequences though of all this connectivity and all these connected devices is going to be massive data. Uh, you know, we've talked about this for a long time. I feel like the big data problem, the big data opportunity has been a multi-decade long conversation. I think AI is, you know, making this exponential and of course having so many connected devices is an opportunity. Dan, I'd love to get your take, but like, what do you think are some of the bigger opportunities, maybe the untapped ones, uh, that are going to come from all this, uh, this explosion of connected devices and data, especially as it pertains to AI. Yeah, and, and the data piece also has another requirement, which is um, the volume of data that's going to be applicable if you take connected vehicles or manufacturing as examples, um, the amount of storage that you're going to need to provide for that data. That's part of where IBM is able to bring in a unique point of view and capability. The connectivity to be able to access that storage, whether on the edge via 5G, 6G, that's where AT&T brings in phenomenal capabilities. And then of course, you get to the AI itself. Um, in the case of automotive and manufacturing, image segmentation is critically important. And that's being able to look at it at a pixel level when you're in a, an autonomous vehicle, being able to understand what's a pedestrian, where are the lines in the road, what does that sign mean? In the case of manufacturing, we at IBM have a product around Maximo that specializes in the ability to identify defects using generative AI. Um, within the product set, you can imagine in a supply chain before it goes out to the end customer. So those are some use cases that I would say we are just scratching the surface on and where we will be five years from now, I, we could all guess on that. I don't know that any of us have the crystal ball, but we have a lot of hypothesis about where we should be headed and it starts with the simpler and very in impactful use cases like care but very quickly goes into these enterprise use cases, for example, the two I highlighted. So there's a lot of industry use cases, verticals, that uh, telecommunications has become important in. I mean, particularly when you get there out on the edge, I mean, energy, right, and having a, a sensor every uh, few meters to be able to know exactly what's going on uh, uh, out there uh, to, to cars, I mean, Cars today, and, and we, we actually track the technology in cars as an analyst firm, um, they're becoming incredible data creators 
but also if you're reliant on data uh, outside the car. Uh, we have electrification, uh, we have autonomous, and quite frankly, you can see a scenario when a few years down the road, it becomes an extension of your living room or your office when you're not doing all the driving and you could do other things. AT&T has been very involved uh, in automotive uh, uh, connectivity, and I'm curious, any thoughts on generative AI and 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 connectivity uh, in the car that, that you guys are working on? Yeah, absolutely. You know, let me give you a little background. So, in in overall, you know, AT and T currently supports more than seventy five million connected cars. All right, we hold more than eighty percent of the market share in the United States. This there is a reason behind it because we are we have developed and we are consistently developing our infrastructure in a way that we can serve the autom automotive customer, you know, for today and for tomorrow. Now, today's car, you know, off brings three main capabilities. You can have telematics data. That's right. You can have a head unit application data, or you can have the Wi-Fi. But the car, this connected car has really transformed into many new verticals, as you indicated. For example, um, autonomous cars, software-driven software, software -driven cars, shared mobility, electrification, Robo taxis, and I keep naming them, you know. Right. All these segments, they have their own unique set of requirements. But there is one thing common, that they need to talk to each other, and they need to talk to the infrastructure, yes. and at the same time, the infrastructure needs to talk back, you know, to these vehicles. This is how this connected car industry is changing. And this is going to generate a lot of data. Yes. What to do with this, you know? We cannot store this data into our data centers, you know? We really need to take that data at the edge of the network where in the close proximity of the sensors, the vehicles, and the infrastructure devices. So, like IBM brings in their strength, you know, on Gen AI through Watson X, how we can take the insights of data and create some purposeful action and send it back to the vehicles or devices so actions can be taken. So it is really started to shape up, but I tell you, this car of the future is very different than the car of today. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and I will say there are, there are aspects to that communication and the data from a use case perspective that even go beyond, I mean, you think about troubleshooting. If it's an autonomous vehicle and suddenly one of the tires loses air, you know, there's not a person driving it to say, oh, my PSI is low, let me slow down. The car has to be able to interpret that data, communicate what the next steps actions are. Um, so that's, that's important. And then you could think of the future where real gen AI analysis Maybe uh, there's a snowstorm that's coming. I live in the mountains of Colorado, it happens often. I will know in advance by looking at the weather and I'll throw my car in a you know, four wheel drive knowing that there's going to be a blizzard. Well, that kind of intelligence, that's where you really connect Gen AI with autonomous and you make it true autonomy. It's a great example. And we bring it down to the real time level and you think about the fact that when the car rapidly loses tire pressure, that it can actually uh, talk to the car next to it. And the car next to it knows that the car to its right could very, you know what I'm saying? Because that's when it gets really unique is yes. when you start to see it being, you know, C to V to V, C to V to X, <laughs> to, to, to make sure and then notifying, you know, for help because it'll know a crash is going to happen well before it actually happens. Gentlemen, this has been a lot of fun. We've got to get back to MWC here. I'm sure if your calendars look anything like ours, <laughs> you are jammed wall to wall, but it's been a great conversation. Generative AI, of course, is going to change many industries, and it sounds like it's going to help shape the next uh, era of a very successful IBM and AT&T partnership. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank Bill. you for having Thank us. You. Thank you. Thanks. All right, everybody, hit that subscribe button. Join us here for all of our coverage at MWC 2024, and of course, Join us for all of our 6-5 episodes all the time. But for this episode, for Patrick Moorhead and myself, it's time to say goodbye. See you all later.